you have to come off between cycles. Like if I could, if I could change anything that goes on today is like, stop. Even now, like my doctor sometimes will have me come totally off my HRT. Like let's, let's take, you know, one break a year and whether it's 10 weeks, 12 weeks, you know, 60, depending on what the levels are. Um, that's, I still think that's healthy to do. What's up, guys? Derek from PlaceMoreDates.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Jay Cutler revealing his past and current cycles, as well as, more notably, his stance on TRT and uh, cycling and common practices in the realm of anabolic exposure. So, Greg Doucette released this clip from a podcast they just did recently, where he basically gets pretty fucking transparent. Now, again, how truthful he is on like the off-season dosages and whatnot. You know, the kind of remains to be seen like he mentions uh at one point how you know his peak off season would typically be like you know 500 milligrams testosterone 600 milligrams equipoise or boldenone undesalinate as is the chemical name some of you guys might know it as but if i was to get ready for like a lip i'll be honest off season i didn't take as much i didn't do gh i would take um, always like 500 migs of test. And I would use like 600 migs of echo poise. Echo poise was my favorite off season. He also talks about his growth hormone use and how he would start at, he's gone up to like, I believe it was 12 units he mentioned in the video. But the truth is, is like, you know, my max, my max, I mean, of course the, the GH would be added in, you know, when I would train for a contest. Um, and listen, the dosage, I mean, remember the first dosage was four I use a day. I may have gone up to nine, 12 uh, on and off. I mean, I think nine was probably the best sitting area for me. Like that seemed to be just like around the testosterone. You know, this, I've done a thousand a week of tests, but 500 was my, was my sweet spot, if that makes sense. And how he thinks it's overrated. And it's kind of interesting to hear him say that. That's something Greg has also said in the past. And it's something I've also said that for a lot of guys who are not like, again, anabolic response is not the same as your response at an IGF, like growth factor perspective level, if that made any fucking logical grammatical sense. Basically growth factor production and expression downstream of proliferative activities of it, causing um, muscle cell hyperplasia, um, myonuclear donation of those satellite cells that have proliferated, equating to new cells that you can then induce hypertrophy in. This is kind of like a differing response in terms of how potent GH is and how useful it is for one guy compared to the next and your response at the androgen receptor in response to synthetic anabolics or testosterone is not going to be the same necessarily as IGF-1, um, GH upstream to IGF-1, etc. So that's why some guys, they use GH and they just say, oh, it's just an expensive fat burner. You know, that's the one thing about the GH that, you know, I think is totally overrated. If you said to me, what's the most overrated thing I did? It was probably the the, the GH because it worked well, like the first or second time I used it, I believe that it kept me fuller and I, they say it helps lean you down. I'm, I'm never, I, I hear these people say, oh, I can eat ice cream and tons of garbage on GH and I stay lean. That's bullshit. Like it doesn't work like that. You don't just shred body fat off. Um, and it's expensive, right? I mean, it's expensive. And then some guys who use it, and that's even a lot of top pros, like Jay Cutler here, he says he doesn't think it was, you know, it kept him fuller, but he doesn't see it as like the magical end all. It's not like you can eat whatever you want on it and not gain fat, which is something that has often been said about, you know, pharma grade, oh, pharma grade serostim. You just fucking grow lean the entire time. It doesn't matter what you eat. You just stay shredded the entire time. He also talks about insulin use and how he would leverage it pre and post workout and whatnot, all but briefly. Um, he doesn't mention it in more elaborate detail in this um, podcast uh, with Milos Sarsev. Might be butchering the pronunciation of that, but that was on uh, Jay Cutler's own podcast. And that was a good podcast, by the way, and definitely worth checking out as well. Um, but the main thing we're going to be talking about in this video, other than, you know, the, the disclosure of, of his anabolic, which is cool. He's that transparent about it. You know, a lot of pros don't want to talk about this shit, um, especially when they're working with companies that may otherwise, you know, frown upon their um, disclosure of use. But, um, you know, Jay is now with like Young LA and other companies, presumably that are more open. And I think it's more welcome to have the harm reduction information surrounding this stuff rather than 
you know, not telling people what you do and then everyone just assuming that every pro use like gobs of gobs of gear and the real secret is, you know, you're just not using enough, which is definitely not the case. And we've seen even in unfortunate circumstances like Boston Lloyd's passing, he himself attested to the fact that when he tried to push the dosages of anabolics upwards of five, upwards of even fucking 10 grams a week for perspective, 10 grams, like 10,000 milligrams of fucking injectables per week. Like that did not yield more muscle growth than he otherwise had at like a couple of grams. Like he just found more toxicity, more side effects. And um, it was counterproductive, especially with the taxation and burden on your organs. Down the line, you were just taking years off of your bodybuilding career in order to get no additional benefit. There is a serious diminishing returns effect with this stuff. And you have to be mindful of the fact that a lot of these hot pros, despite the fact that a lot of them do in fact water down what they are taking because they want other people to not copy what they're doing, or they just want to make it seem like they have better genetics than the, than the next guy. They don't want to downplay their hard work, et cetera, whatever the reason may be. A lot of times there are individuals that are pushing the envelope at even like a men's physique fucking regional level, taking what other like open bodybuilders take to prepare for like national level shows or even like, you know, entry level, you know, pros are taking like a couple grams in like many cases. And then guys that like through your fucking local gym rat are taking the same shit because they think that's just the secret is they're not taking enough. When in reality, they just don't have the genetics for it. So you have to be very, very, you have to check yourself on this stuff. And it's, you know, unfortunate that some individuals have had like you know, very, very bad outcomes with like horrible, like long-term organ degradation, or in some cases, even literal death in order to make this, uh, you know, more well-known. But hopefully at this point, people realize that more is not always better. Obviously there is a dose dependent increase in fat-free mass in the clinical data. We have upwards of 600 milligrams of test, 600 milligrams of nandrolone, upwards of 1.2 grams of primabolin, even in women. Never fucking do that, by the way. I'm just saying like there's very limited data on super high dosages. But what you do see definitively is a diminishing returns effect. We're doubling the dose does not double the results. At some point it diminishes and each increment diminishes more and more to a point where your individual goals need to dictate what you're doing. And more than likely what you might otherwise think is necessary is maybe not, you know, or you just don't have the genetic, the genetic response that's cut out for using those dosages to begin with, because you otherwise can't like make adequate use of them, so to speak. So just be careful with this shit again. And I don't know if Jay is, you know, underplaying his use, you know, to be uh, like, I'm sure he's pushed the envelope in the off season multiple times, like more than fucking, you know, a gram or a gram and a half of cumulative injectables. But otherwise he is giving uh, like way more transparency than I've ever heard him talk about before. And it's cool to get this kind of insight from who is otherwise like one of the I don't know, best bodybuilders of all time, essentially. Now, as far as the most controversial thing in this video, other than his dosages in the off season, is his statements on testosterone replacement therapy and cycling. So he mentions how guys in the 90s, you know, guys, you know, in his era would, like, I guess his era is more like early 2000s than anything when he came into his own. But, you know, that kind of time frame, guys would come off apparently and cycle off or, you know, so he thought. And that means coming off entirely. That doesn't mean coming down to a cruise dose of fucking 300, 400 milligrams. That means literally like cycling off apparently. And um, he notices that there's a growing trend with the blast and cruise mentality nowadays where guys are staying on all, the, on all the time. And yeah, like we definitely see individuals who claim they come off when in reality coming off for four weeks when you have long acting injectables in your system that then literally have metabolite interactions that will linger for fucking months on end. Like your four weeks off is not actually four weeks off oftentimes. And then guys are getting back on. Like this is not, you know, the healthiest thing to be doing, obviously. Now, again, is this, you know, the most conducive approach to become a top pro versus not, you know, there's definitely an argument to be had for how much you need to have your foot on the gas during the year and how much time you need to let things kind of get back to homeostasis to whatever extent you can let that happen. But his statements on TRT and the cyclical nature of introducing hormones and taking them out, like his first kind of issue with the cyclical nature of things and how things are, you know, not following a time off. Um, no one's following a time off schedule anymore. They're instead going to cruises and not giving themselves a chance to recover necessarily, implying that it's otherwise going to lead to, um, you know, subpar health and early demises of bodybuilders likely. But he also mentions the cyclical nature of what should be 
implemented in a TRT regimen, which I found very, very interesting and kind of baffling, to be honest. He mentions here how his doctor has him cycle off of his TRT during the year. Even now, like my doctor sometimes will have me come totally off my HRT. Like let's, let's take, you know, one break a year and whether it's 10 weeks, 12 weeks, you know, 60, depending on what the levels are, um, that's, I still think that's healthy to do. So what do I think about that statement in general? I think that if you're an individual who is blasting shit, if this is like a lifelong commitment, which, it, you know, if you're bodybuilding and this is your career, the likelihood that you are going to recover your HPTA in time for your next blast, you know, I would think you're probably going to do more harm than good by cycling off entirely, putting your body in a state of hypogonadism with a shit ton of neurotoxicity, cardiovascular stress, and just feeling like dog shit and stripping a ton of lean mass off your frame and fluctuating wildly in weight, whereby you're putting more pressure on your heart and other organ systems through the wild fluctuations and lack of ability to adapt and achieve some level of stability and homeostasis, I think the more reasonable, actual healthy approach is going down to a TRT. Like if you're not, you know, obviously there's a debate for, you know, top pros who have to stay at, you know, some sort of cruise level that's above TRT to sustain where they're at and continuously make progress. I'm not necessarily talking about that. I'm more so referring to be cycling off entirely for guys who are competing multiple times a year or even Olympia competitors, you know, doing a productive off season, which is, I don't know, like at least a fucking handful of months, potentially, you know, like three month blast. Are they going to be that useful for a top pro who's already like at their peak and trying to surpass what their current peak is, you know, these guys are probably going to be on some sort of, you know, blasting level of hormone exposure for, you know, three quarters of a year or something like that. I'm not saying you need or don't need to do that, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, these guys that are cycling off, like are really, really not. They're essentially crashing their systems, attempting to achieve some level of transient, good looking blood work on their, on paper by the use of, you know, PCT drugs, which are not healthy either, and achieving a transient, like snapshot in time, good looking blood work panel in order to justify going back on the blast phase. When in reality, the fluctuations in body weight, the significant ups and downs, the depriving yourself of androgens entirely by going off cold turkey and then trying to jump back on a super physiological dose, like at a, some intense super blast level, I would probably assert is less healthy than just going down to a TRT level and not letting your hormones all crash into fucking nothingness. But aside from that, cycling off of TRT, I think this is absolutely insane, to be honest. I think that if you are hypogonadal and otherwise require it clinically, this is something that you have justifiably been prescribed because you cannot produce an adequate amount of hormone. For somebody, for a doctor to think that you are somehow after using hormones that to support your literal fucking physiological functions that were otherwise incapable of being supported from your lack of natural production at baseline to think that down the line after being on exogenous hormones, which is suppressive, that you're going to somehow come off the TRT and then recover natural function that is sufficient enough to be healthy and then go back on the TRT is a good way to go is absolutely fucking baffling to me. Like that sounds like the most unhealthy practice I could possibly imagine for somebody who's prescribed TRT. I'm not, you know, shitting on Jay necessarily. I'm shitting on what he has been, like the information he has been given, you know, by a medical professional. It's kind of, it's kind of insane to me that this is being perpetuated at some level in, you know, the medical community. Now, again, this does not speak for all doctors. There are a lot of high quality doctors who know how absurd this would sound, literally depriving somebody of androgens who otherwise literally clinically needed them because they were deficient prior, naturally, literally insufficient to support erectile function, fucking brain health, cardiovascular health, normal functions on a day-to-day -day basis. You are at baseline, not able to support these. You are literally a walking time bomb of like, you know, bad health. You get on TRT, you get a relief of a lot of these issues. And then to assert that that individual who was otherwise deficient should then come off of the hormones. Like what the fuck, dude? I don't get it. So I'm not really sure what the logic is in that. To me, at a surface level, it seems absolutely baffling. And the reason I'm making this video is because Jay is somebody a lot of people look up to and otherwise take what he says at face value because he's a fucking top, one of the best bodybuilders of all time. And if his doctor tells him that he should be cycling his TRT, 
I'm sure there are a lot of guys who are fans of him watching this video who probably think that, oh, I should cycle my TRT too. No, you shouldn't, in my opinion. I think you should probably get an opinion from another doctor and really, really evaluate that decision thoroughly. Not just, you know, haphazardly do it because you heard it on a podcast and because Jay's doctor said it and Jay must have the best doctor on the fucking planet. This is something I would evaluate very carefully before you just go through with it. So, you know, perhaps there is, you know, I'm misinterpreting what he's saying in some capacity. Maybe there's some reason as to why he's doing it. Perhaps his doctor thinks he needs to for like fertility purposes or something. Like I don't even get how this conclusion could have been made. But to me, this is something that should be approached with extreme caution. And I would highly advise you get a second opinion from another medical professional if your overseeing physician is recommending you cycle off of the hormones you're literally dependent on because your balls or your you know HPTA in general is insufficient to support your everyday life. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. I'd much appreciate it. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredays.com, follow me on Instagram. And more place more days, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. If you want to get high quality medical oversight from doctors who will not pull you off of the hormones that you literally need to fucking live your life, you can check out Merrick Health. It's linked in the description below. You can get access to high quality diagnostics with providers who are looking out for your best interests and are actually interested in interpreting the information, educating the patients, and will not just haphazardly throw you on a protocol of TRT, HCG, and astrazole, which is all too common in this um, hormone replacement therapy um, industry, unfortunately. So we pride ourselves on the education, the information, staying on top of the cutting edge literature when it comes to high sensitivity assay, biomarkers for assessing cardiovascular disease risk, liver cancer, like the most obscure shit that would otherwise not be included. From most companies' panels, we have in our turnkey audited panels that I've looked at personally and helped design, as well as the most cost-efficient self-service labs builder where you can add your own single biomarkers, even with high sensitivity assay testing to your own panel that you can create at checkout and just check, get your bloods done. You don't need to get seen by a doctor, but if you would like medical oversight too, we have providers on staff who are ready and willing to uh, dig into everything and help design a plan accordingly um, that is warranted to help support your um, needs. And that is not just in the realm of pharmacology. We are um, probably one of the only um, platforms I would imagine that is uh, highlights the importance of lifestyle interventions, dietary manipulation, sleep hygiene interventions, and are not just interested in maxing out the number of prescriptions we can get people on. So you should check that out. If you're interested in high quality medical oversight as well, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas, I designed myself from scratch, recommended uh, diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance whilst being mindful of micronutrient intake and gut health, clothing company that sponsors me, anything else that supports me, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.